What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Leesum RC LSX140. This is a 140 millimeter little unibody style, kind of a chameleon type of clone. It does only have a single mount stack option in here, um, meaning single by one stack, not two up. Like some of the other frames, like the Baby Turtles, we have two stacks here. For the run cam split mini, you can do that, which is super awesome with this particular quad. This is kind of an alternative, in my opinion, to the LSX140. But the biggest thing about this one is the fact that this one is a freestyle beast. It does not quite fly the same as the Baby Turtles. The Baby Turtles is, in my opinion, more of kind of like a 3-inch Cinewhoop. So uh, if you're looking for something super lightweight that is a 4S beast, this little guy flies like... A maniac it flies like some kind of Ferrari um, super huge punch outs really nice recovery from those big maneuvers when you're coming back low to the ground you have plenty of power and it has super boosty extra large motors on here um, usually people are using the 1106s on these types of frames but these are just a little bit bigger these are 1206s and they are 4500 kV I believe so Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the review. Uh, but before I get started, I gotta let you know that I am giving away one of these awesome bad boys. This is the Mobula 7 HD version, and this one's gonna get shipped to your door. If you decide to uh, support me on Patreon, you can get entered in to win this, as well as our Discord chats behind the scene. It's super awesome. There's a lot of FPV related chat and you can share videos and images and get help with beta flight all that cool stuff Just click the link down below that says be my friend and sign up with the rest of the guys uh, Really cool drone camps community on discord. So um, definitely do that But let's go ahead and jump right into some flying because I think the flying the proof is in the flying and I took this one from zero to hero It had 2017 firmware on here. It was flying like a dog. It had a lot of wobble and jitter in probably about 60% throttle and above so it was really terrible when I first spooled it up and I took some time to tune it for you guys so in this video also not only I'm going to show you some line of sight some FPD I'm also going to take it into beta flight give you all my settings that I have on here and share my awesome tune with you um, it still could use a tiny bit of work honestly but it pretty much makes this quad fly um, extremely well now and I'm very happy with the way it flies and uh, I got rid of about 95% of the jitters so uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you my first flight with it the maiden flight and after that we'll do some FPU we'll come back in we'll check out some of the specs on this frame I'll give you my opinion my pros and cons on it and uh, then we'll go into beta flight so here we go let's do some flying all right here we go my you know my first flight test with this it it did not have any tune on here so I was flying it with stock pids it was 2017 beta flight on here so it absolutely needs to be updated if you buy it please go to the end of this video go through all the beta flight settings on there and make sure that you update the quad first put all my settings and pids in there and you'll have a fantastic quad after that uh, before that it was definitely flying like a dog and I say that it flies like a dog some people don't understand that in foreign countries but it means that dogs don't fly and this thing definitely was having tons of vibra issues and I, I needed to tune it so I spent a little bit of time with it for you guys and I, I went from having a dog to a rock star and now it flies great and I'm gonna say that the, the tune is about 95% perfect uh, there's a little bit of wobble at the tight end the top end of the stick but um, I think it's great now where it's at. So I was really excited finally to get a good tune on it and I hopped right into the FPV with this guy. It's awesome now. So let me show you what I got.
<laughs> Alright guys, welcome back from the flying. What do you guys think about that? Do you think this is a 4S little beast that's ready to be released? Um, I think it's actually pretty good. And now that I have it tuned, I love the way it flies. I think the power to weight ratio is through the roof. It actually flies way better than my bigger cousin, the Baby Turtles. This one has much larger 1408 Beastie style motors with those full size prop nuts on there, which I love. But I gotta say that with these three inch Avon style clone props, it comes with two of those, by the way, two sets in the box. You get the clear white ones and the smoke color ones here to go with those purple motors. I like the smoke color ones better. It did not seem to have a good tune on it right away. Uh, a friend of mine that was with me, Diego, we were flying this, and we heard jitters right away when we took off for the line of sight. He heard them inside the car, which is actually pretty good ears because uh, this had tons of jitter. But once I sat with it for about, I guess for about 15 minutes, I dialed new numbers into it after about three or four batteries, um, or after about three or four flights, and then I had it dialed in. So it, it, it tuned up pretty quick. I worked on the P's and the D's and a little bit of the eyes, and after some number changes, I came to a, a tune that I really liked on this. So I, I feel like this is worth buying now if you decide to use my PIDs on it. Um, otherwise, if you don't know how to PID tune, it's gonna be extremely difficult, and I will share my PIDs for this quad at the end of the video, as I said. Um, you do have smart audio on here, which is super cool. So you can change the power on this flight controller VTX combo. It's the Maytech F4 on here, and we have 28 amp ESCs using D-Shot 600. So it is very responsive, very smooth sounding, and I love these 1206 motors. I've actually never flown these motors before, but I, I, I really, I, I kind of like them. I, I like them better than the 1106s, and I use 1106s, but these will be just a little bit more efficient than the 1106s with some super high KV. So um, you're getting close to four minutes flight time. If you want to run like a 4S 850 on this quad, you can. You can even run a 4S 1000 milliamp on here um, at the heaviest for maybe some slow flow style slow motion maneuvers you could use like a 4s 1300 uh, it's just going to get a little bit heavy but the cool side of that is if you wanted to put a 4s 850 on here with some kind of little mini action cam up here you could also do that say you had something like a gopro session mount it right up there and uh, take some 4k footage you do have that kind of option there is plenty of room on top. You can run this antenna out the back if you want to do it that way. It does have the UFL connector on this side right here. It's the smaller one. I took a little bit of liquid tape and put over top of it. You can use a little bit of hot glue as well. Either way, do not use crazy glue, by the way, um, and you can secure that. If it pops off, you might lose this antenna. So uh, I have also used a little bit of heat shrink here to stand it up to get a little bit better um, signal back to my goggles. And some people were saying that they didn't really like the camera, but I, I think the camera actually looks pretty good. Um, it has a 650L TVL camera on here. It is a Sony CCD camera. So I, I think it's actually a pretty decent looking camera. Um, it has a working voltage from five to 36 volts, which is huge. Um, and it actually does say, well, yeah, Banggood has some really funny stuff going on here. They have mini CCD camera, 650 TVL, and just below that it says 700 TVL. So, uh, hmm, uh, I'm, I'm going to go with 700, hopefully, because it, it did look pretty good. Uh, I think that if this one, if you can get this one for a discounted price, I'm going to put a, a link down below, and then I will put the coupon code for this one. It will be uh, Toyho, which is a really funny discount code, T-O-Y-H-O. You'll be able to get a little bit of a discount off this one. I think that'll make it worth the price. But I think the sweet spot here is 4S 850 all day with this quad. Um, it is an absolute blast to fly. I think the, the flying characteristic of this quad was what I really love about this. So, um, And the fact that if you want a super sweet flying quad, probably better than the Baby Turtles because it's lighter and you want 1080p, you have the room to do that in here. You could put that extra stack in here for a run cam split. Two, you wanna use the two version because that's the single stack split mini. That's the one you want for full HD video. Now, if you can't get enough tilt in here, take this bottom bar off and push it far up as you want. So I have about 30 degrees tilt in there right now. And I felt like I could have maybe used a little more tilt because you know what? This quad is a hot rod. 
Another battery that I might suggest to make this fly even better would be the 4S GNB battery. It's a 550 milliamp. And like I said, you can do a top mount or a bottom mount. In the box, I also got this little crappy strap. These are not that great. Um, kind of uh, really not one that I prefer. I really like these thin run cam style straps, or you can use the iFlight strap. Just gonna hold a little bit larger battery for you. Um, and then the props also that came in the box. But if you set this up, make sure you put your zip tie back here to secure this because these wires are quite thin and they can break off the back of the ESC if your battery gets yanked. Another thing I really liked about this quad is the fact that it does have metal bracing in the front like the Chameleon quad, metal bracing in the back, LEDs, and a full-size buzzer back here. So it's loud. You can hear it out in the field when you crash it. And the unibody seems to have lightened it up a lot, which I really like. I put a little piece of Velcro down here, and I ran my battery on the bottom for this particular quad. So now that I have a decent tune on here and I'm really happy with the way it flies, you can go back and watch that footage again. I just, I gave this thing about 80 to 95% throttle most of the time, and I didn't have any problems with VTX overheating. I know there was some talk about that. It does get super hot, but it's winter time right now. If you want to replace that later, you could do that. Uh, also, you want to update the firmware that's on here. It is Maytech F4 firmware. The boot button is right next to the USB port right here, as always. Um, you can do that. I will try to put the PIDs up on the screen here, and I'm gonna walk you guys through Betaflight, all my settings. If you bought this, absolutely. Hopefully this video helps you out. So let's go ahead and hop into Betaflight. Before I do that, I'm gonna give this one a 4.8 stars out of five. I absolutely love it now. I thought it was a piece of trash when I first flew it, uh, but you know, there's always a way out if you know how to pid tune and um, I had it pid tuned within about 20 minutes so I'm super happy about that and I think it's an absolute beast on 4S I, I cherish this quad now I think it's great so uh, let's go ahead and jump into beta flight now and I'll give you my settings on it all right so let me go ahead and get the cable plugged into the flight controller and if you're new to beta flight please by all means do use a data cable so that you can transmit your data from your quad, from the computer back to your quad, vice versa. Uh, also, you want to make sure that you download the drivers, install it on your PC, and restart your PC before you jump into Betaflight. Uh, no, a lot of guys have had some problems with Betaflight not loading up on their quads lately. So this is what's great about this channel, and I really cherish the fact that I can share my settings with you guys on these new quads that come out. Um, ones that I have never seen before, I always get them in and I never know what to expect. So uh, thank God for Betaflight because you can take uh, a zero and make it a hero. And that's what's really, really cool about pit tuning. So first in the setup, first thing you want to do is face the quad back towards you like this and hit the reset Z axis there. Check all of your angles, left, right, forward, back. Most of the motors should be spinning the right direction in the configuration they are set up to spin in. It's the props in configuration with the right turn rear back here. That's how I always have you guys start out to put your props on RRR, right turn rear. And number four will be right turn, two and three will be left turn. So set up in the quad X configuration, ESC motor features are set to D-Shot 600 there. 4.5 on the motor aisle and turn motor stop off. If, it, if yours came with motor stop on, Turn it off. It's going to really save you. If you arm your quad, you want the motors to be spinning and let you know that it's armed. Now, board and sensor alignment's all zeroed out. We have no 45 degree angle or anything weird on this one. Accelerometer's turned on, 8K, 2 kilohertz there. And personalization, I put to LSX140 so I knew what quad I was flying and recording video of. I do not have RSSI hooked up. The receiver is set to serial based receiver spec sat S bus and S bus there for the serial receiver provider. That's all good. And the other features, we have soft serial set on for enabling CPU-based serial ports, ports and telemetry for telemetry output, obviously, and OSD. We have that. Anti-gravity and dynamic filters on. And we also using the D-Shot beacon configuration just as a backup. If I lose signal from my, my radio or if the receiver, say the receiver wire comes off, it will still beep when it goes into fail safe. So once you have all these settings for your configuration page, the same. Go ahead and save and reboot. Now we're gonna go back into the ports and I wanna show you guys, UART1 is where your S bus for your XM Plus is gonna go. That's where your receiver is. And the UART2 is for your IRC tramp. 
and that will give you your smart audio. And the way to access that, if you don't know it, is left stick over to the right and the left, and right stick up. So that will pull you into the menus, and you can use your right stick to make selections, change the power, bands, and channels. We're going to go to power and battery here. I have the minimum cell voltage set to 2.9, warning cell voltage set to 2.9 as well. Maximum cell voltage should be set to 4.3. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now let's talk about failsafe. Guard time is 2. Failsafe low throttle delay is 100. Failsafe procedure is always set to drop, guys. And I only have two settings over here for the channel fallback settings, arm for aux 1 and beeper for aux 3. So I'm only using acro mode on this quad. If you want to set up stability mode, it will be angle, which will be your first mode. Now let me go ahead and grab my radio and I'll plug in a battery. And we will, we will check to see that all of our channel maps are right. If your channel maps are wrong and they look like this and you have a Tyrannus radio, make sure you select FR Sky Futaba High Tech. And when you hit save, you should see all of your channel maps go correct. And I'm going to show you how to set up that in just a moment. But let's go ahead and run through the PIDs now. Let me zoom in real quick so you can just pause this video and copy my PIDs over, guys. I have 40, 43, 15, 55, 42, 50, 19, 57, 51, 45, 0, and 60 there. And all my super rates right here are set to 7, 0. 0 0.70 on the Super 8. That's a little bit slow. You can speed it up by doing 7.5 or 8.0. Now down here in the PID controller settings, we have iTerm rotation turned on. Acro Trainer limit angle is set to 20 if you decide to use Acro Trainer. There is an Acro Trainer mode in the Modes tab. So now we're going to go to Receiver, and we're going to plug a battery into the quad and turn on the radio. Let me show you how your channel map should look so that your quad flies right the first time. Now before I plug in a battery, I'm just going to turn on my radio and see if it connects and shows me any response here once the radio is ready. And I don't see any response, so if that happens to you, take a battery, plug your battery in, and you might see some change here. Okay, so sometimes you have to plug in a battery on certain quads. Other quads don't require that, but this one does. So once you see this menu, we're going to check the left stick first. And we've already changed the channel map there to AETR, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's for FR Sky here. I'm going to check the throttle up and down. It should look like that for your throttle. Now we're going to check the yaw axis, left, right. Now we're going to check roll, left and right. We're going to check pitch. should go up and down. We're going to check pitch again, up and down. I don't see anything moving. So I'm just going to, it looks like it froze up for a second. I'm going to unplug the quad, plug it back in. Okay. I'm going to check pitch up and down. That's good. Beta flight can freeze up left and right. Haven't seen it happen often. Everything looks good there. So we're going to check the auxiliary one channel. And that is my large switch over here on my index figure on this side of the, So that's working. And our beeper is going to be on aux 3. And if you have a mode switch, I usually have my mode switch set to 2 if you decide to fly different modes. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Looks like beta flight froze up again. It's very strange. Okay, it's back. Might be my computer. So we're going to go down to modes now. And this is where you're going to set up your switches. If you, if you have a problem and you're not seeing things move here, which I am seeing things move, go back to your receiver tab, move your switches here, and you can see what aux you need to select for modes, okay? So aux one, I know that is my big switch here, and I'm moving it here. You guys hear the quad beep, because it's letting me know that it would be armed, but right now I have it plugged into USB, so I don't want to do that. So you can see it should go inside there, if you're going to add stability mode, do it like this. Go down to aux 2. Move your slider bar back so it's centered up here. That's usually the first mode you want on your arm switch, all the way facing away from you here. And you want it to be centered up in that gold bar, just like that. Just grab this and scooch it in. And then your next mode, say you're going to add horizon. We're going to also put that on aux 2. So we want that to the next position down, which would be center. And you see how the yellow dot moved there. We're going to scooch that in just like that and then save that 
Now you see horizons lit up because I'm in that middle switch mode. Now all the way back up, angle is there. That's also stability. Horizon will just allow you to do flips. Angle will not. And if I go down to the last position all the way down here, that will be floating in free space over here. And that is where you find acro mode. It does not exist in this list. So if you're looking for it and it's not there, that's how you put acro on your quad. Or if you want to go full acro, you can just delete both of those modes. And once you arm the quad, you're going to be flying in full acro here. It's just going to be floating in space there. Beeper is on aux 3. My beeper works. And I don't have any type of crash recovery or turtle mode on this quad. And that's it for the modes, guys. Now for the OSD, very simple for me. I have my battery telemetry here for my main battery voltage, my mode that I'm flying in, which is easy acro. My, my craft name is LSX140. And flight timer, I have timer two here. That shows me from the time I arm it to the time I disarm it. And that is a more accurate uh, flight time than timer one because timer one works from the moment you plug in the battery. And if you want to use both, you can also do that. You can also change the font to be a little bit bolder. If you click on the font manager down here at the bottom, right there, that will show you some default bold, large, extra large, beta flight. All these different fonts are here for presets. You can select one of those if you want to change it. Once you do that, there's a little progress bar going to go down through here, and you just click on Upload Font, of course, and the quad's going to restart Betaflight, and you'll come back inside. Now let's go to the CLI, and you can check what version it is by typing version. Hit Return. So now we see February 16th, Maytech F411. When you go to update your quad, make sure that you're using F, uh, the Maytech F411 firmware, and that that is outside of this entire area. So if you can't find it in here, if you're looking for that uh, and you get confused, just remember that you need to actually disconnect here and go to this screen. You're gonna click on this third one down right here and I'm gonna go out again. I'm gonna go to firmware flasher. I'm gonna choose the board once that loads up. You have to have an internet connection, guys, also. Maytech F411, that should automatically load. Now I'm gonna select the newest one and what you need to do is, you don't have to plug a battery in, unplug your USB cable here, load firmware online. Once you do that, it should show you some screen like this. It'll load up in a minute. There we go. Now you're going to disconnect. What I normally do is I disconnect the cable at the computer instead of unplugging this. Because the more you unplug and plug this back in, the more chance to risk you have of breaking that USB port off the flight controller. Not a good thing. So what you need to do now is take, what I usually use is something like a bamboo skewer, and I push that little gold tab down, and I hold that tab down, and then I plug it in over at the computer side of things here. Once I plug it in, I hit flash firmware down here, and it starts that process. Once you get all the way to the, the, the end part where it says verifying, you can let go of your bamboo skewer on that gold button, and you should have all of your latest beta flight updated on there. But before you do that, um, you want to make sure that if you did the settings to begin with inside beta flight, like I showed you here, and I would probably just go ahead and update it first and then put my settings in there. When you're done with that, do a DUMP, a dump, hit return. Now copy and paste all this information in this window to a text file and save it for later in case you have to to, something happens to your quad or you, you mess up in beta flight and you delete something or you mess up your PIDs, you always have a backup of it. Uh, make a folder of all your PIDs on all your quads and that way uh, you'll have a backup of every single setting that you did here in this video. So again, thanks again for watching and hopefully this beta flight tutorial helped you guys out and showed you something. Maybe you learned something today. I hope you did. So anyway, guys, I'm Justin Davis. It's Monday. Let's go. The week is here. Let's do it. Take care, guys. I'll see you on the next one.